Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Change Your Mind podcast. I'm your host, Chris Ashley, where we explore the intersection between personal development, spirituality, and science. And I think we're going to hit all three of those notes today. Uh, We're going to talk all about human design. I'm really excited. Human design is something that I've just recently uh, learned about, and I don't know that much about it. So I'm going to be learning right along with you. Uh, Just first, a couple quick announcements. Uh, Head over to the links in the show notes. You'll find a link to my book, Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality. You'll find a link to a bunch of freebie downloads, my courses, a free masterclass, coaching with me, lots of ways to stay connected. So please uh, come find me on social. Come join my community. Let's make the world a better place together. Hi, I'm Chris. When I was younger, I went through trauma that caused me to feel broken and lost. But my life changed after I had a spiritual awakening. Since then, I've dedicated my life to studying and learning from masters all around the world that have helped me to create a life of fulfillment and abundance beyond my wildest dreams. Now I'm dedicated to sharing everything I've learned so that you don't have to suffer for decades like I did. I've seen people's lives completely transform, and I share it all right here. All right, so I'm so excited for my guest, Kathy Bachanko, today. So Kathy is a 6'2 emotional projector and has been in her human design experiment since 2016. She is trained in traditional human design as well as quantum human design and its healing partner, the quantum alignment system. She incorporates her own gifts as, uh, to guide others. As an intuitive human design analyst and mentor, her main focus is to help people navigate the uncertainty of life while undertaking this human design experiment. Using the human design chart and her own intuition, she guides towards a shift in perspective that allows you to confidently stand in your own power, especially during uncertain times and particularly in relation to others. So welcome, Kathy. I'm so excited to have you here. Hi, I'm excited to be here. You said so well, I'm really impressed because you didn't even ask. What was that? (laughs) You said my last name without even asking. I'm very impressed. You know, I had that split second right before I said it where I was like, oh, shoot, I forgot to ask how to pronounce it. So I'm I'm glad it worked out. You did well. Um, you know, one time I had someone whose last name I was like, I'm not even going to try. And I just I just introduced them by their first name. And then I felt terrible <laughs> after. Um, but good. I'm glad I nailed it. All right. So I'm I'm so excited, like I said, to hear all about human design today. Um, But I like to start all my episodes the same way, and that is by asking my guests their origin story. So if you could give us a little background on what led you to this path, how did you find human design, and um, just tell us a little bit about your background. Well, okay, so I just celebrated a big birthday, so I have a lot of story to talk about because I just turned 60 um, just a couple weeks ago. And... um, Human design actually teaches that in my chart, I have a threefold path to my life. And so I really feel like I lived that. And I lived um, up until about 30, really trying to, um, as what you might call a, a seeker, you know, trying all kinds of different things, seeing what worked or whatever. And then around 30, I had that strong urge to like settle down, which is also in my design um, which is interesting. But so I, I got married, had did the whole family route, actually quit my job t- in order to raise my daughter, did all this traditional stuff with always being a little bit of a weirdo in the background, right? <laughs> and um, I always liked the woo-woo a little more than the average suburban um, mom at the PTA meetings. But <laughs> when I went through this this third phase, where I where I really started to question, okay, what am I beyond Kathy, the mom who's now raised her daughter and this whole sort of thing? I started really questioning a bunch of things. And through the course of exploring things, I was introduced to human design. And at that point, I was really going through all kinds of different exploration. I was doing a lot of self-help type of stuff. I was a huge Brene Brown fan. I got really deep into the understanding the history of different religions, that sort of thing. But it was, they were all pretty straightforward. Um, they weren't so esoteric. And then when I found human design, it spoke to me so strongly. But then I started to explore explore it deeply and there was just a lot of stuff that just felt so weird for my like little normal life right 
I was not at that point in 2016. I think a lot of us have in this past seven years really evolved in the way we think about the world. Maybe some people have been that way for a long time. I was not. But so I started to get into this whole concept of, wow, there's something out there can, that can help me understand why I don't feel like I fit in in all these places I'm told I'm supposed to do all these certain things a certain way. And it always just feels like it's trying to put a square peg in a round hole, right? And when I saw my human design chart and started to explore it, it resonated deeply. But then I, my mind started saying, this is weird. You, how can you from your birth time know this stuff? This can't be true. And what are they talking about design crystals and all this stuff? It just felt too weird. And I put it aside. And then when I had things that would happen in my life would just all of a sudden I would in the back of my mind, I would go, oh, yeah, well, Remember that thing in your human design said that you're meant to not initiate things. You're meant to wait and use your energy in places where people recognize your gifts. And see, you tried to start that yourself and it didn't do well. And oh, look at how well that turned out. And that's something where someone approached you and said, hey, I've noticed this about you. And I started to notice these little things where I was observing. And this is the thing about human design is it's meant to be an experiment. And I feel like in some ways that made my experiment much purer in the beginning because I was really observing life and then going back and like looking at the results and saying, oh yeah, it does work better when I do it this way that they said. I have what's called emotional authority in human design, which means I have an emotional wave and I'm not meant to make in the, in the moment decisions. And I was constantly making decisions from a place of excitement or a place of deep despair where I, that's it, I'm done, right? Kind of decisions. And they would not work. Or I would wonder, why can't I make up to make up my mind when I go to a restaurant? I can't, I can sit there forever and not know what to order. And all those things human design showed me were not things I needed to fix. They were things I that were like little hidden gifts of mine that I just needed to learn how to unpack and and to view. So it um it really, for me, gave me permission and encouragement to really know who I am in a way that has completely empowered me and has made me um, just so, like, I, I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I'm, I have all the, I have the, I have enough confidence in myself to ask all the questions. And that's where we get the answers, right? When we, when we can ask the questions and not feel stupid, not feel judged, not feel like, oh, what's this person going to say about this? Or what if my, you know, what if my people don't come along with me on the journey, right? And that was the hardest part was to realize that, oh, I can either, you know, I can either say, hey, I'm going to take this journey to to my authenticity and if you're really my people then you're gonna come along with me and if you're not then I thank you for the part of my journey that you're a part of but I can't not take this journey to who I am and that's what's been really what's really cool is as I realize that when I step into my own authentic power and my authenticity, I give other people the permission to do the same and the encouragement. And people that I was most afraid would be like, oh, they're they're coming along in these kind of you know not not to say that they're like my husband. He he still doesn't understand human design. He's always like. I'm glad that it's it still doesn't make sense to me. And you know what? I can see in his design that he's a very logical circuitry kind of person and this is not his his modality, right? But he's coming along with me in the fact that he is becoming more and more authentically himself, less of a people pleaser, less of doing things to keep me from being upset and more doing things for himself too. So when we step into our own power, we empower others to do the same. That was a long rant. I'll pause. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was great. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, that's, that's really beautiful that you've seen it affecting the people in your life as well. So uh, I'm going to ask the obvious question. What exactly is human design? 
Um, you know, I know you, you put in your birthday and there's a chart that gets read, but it seems like it goes way more in depth than, uh, like an astrology chart. And it, there's way less questions than the Myers-Briggs personality. So, uh, tell me a little bit, like what's the definition of human design? So human design is a blend of ancient wisdom traditions and modern science wisdom like cosmology, quantum, the modern parts are cosmology, um, quantum physics, and um, epigenetics are all com- the modern components that are layered onto this beautiful ancient wisdom traditions of the I Ching, the astrology, the Kabbalah, um, the Hindu Brahman chakra system. I think I got them all there. So basically what happened is in in a metaphys in a um I'm blanking on the word, but Ra Uru, who is who is the the receiver of the transmission, um basically channeled this this um my brain's not computing. I'm not channeling right now, obviously, but he <laughs> he channeled this this program, this system, right? where over the course of seven days, he drew out all of these charts based on this voice that told him what to do. He was on the island of Ibiza, which the veil is very thin there. And a lot of people have had some pretty intense um, experiences there. But so what happens is the voice basically told him, okay, take an astrology. Like if if you're familiar with any of these traditions, you know that astrology if you do your nail chart, there's a wheel and there's different places with the houses. So basically, if you took the wheel of astrology and you layered in um, around that wheel, the 64 hexagrams of the Chinese I Ching, they would all, he was told which ones to put into each astrological placement. And then he was told to draw this whole like figure that used the um, channels come from the tree of life, this the Sarah, I don't have the word in front of me, so I can't say it, Sarah path or whatever it is from the, the Kabbalah. And the energy centers are based loosely on the Hindu chakra system, although they have been divided into nine energy centers. So there's all this stuff, right? But the basic is that all of these things are telling us that we've always had the you know, it's like Dorothy, right? The truth, you've always had it it within you. We've always known the truth. This is giving us a way to get all of the clutter out of our minds that's keeping us from seeing the truth. So it gives us this system that we can look at that says, here's how your energy works. There's 64 archetypes that we all have all of the chart. So we all have these 64 archetypes, but we have specific ways that we came here to impact the world with certain ones and to receive and learn from others. So where we have definition in the chart is decided based on the time you're born and the the way it it gets plugged into the chart. And that's why the birth time comes in, the neutrino stream, which we know neutrinos are all around us. There's all these things that are impacting our bodies. And so the neutrino stream is what dis, what tells you where the different definition it's based on the charts so i'm getting too deep now i can tell already no uh, no no you're not okay. getting too deep keep going okay. okay so we have this chart that says okay kristen you are here you're chris you go by chris but i said i think i have kristen on your chart um you, so, asked my, you asked my full name and, and listeners, by right, the way, that's uh, fine. I really, by the way, Kathy did my chart. So if you hear yes. her referring to it, that's why. <laughs> right. So when we look at yours, you are a type that is, there are, there are different energy types that uh, explain how our, we're meant to respond to life. Right. And there, there are four, some people say four types, some people say five, and you'll notice just like any kind of um, system with a lot of, as you get a lot of followers, you get a lot of interpretations and some people get very passionate. I personally say if anybody gets too hung up on any 
specifics of what they're teaching get just go away just don't listen to them anymore so you'll some some people will adamantly say there's only four types and some people say there's five and it doesn't matter to me there's four with a subtype five however you want to look at it but you're a generator which a generator is a very blah sounding word right but a generator type means you're here to generate um the build the world you're here to generate the world you it's an alk it's really an alchemy type of thing you're here to take and people's ideas and inspiration and turn it into form so generators have you know if you think about a generator it's an energy source you have a very consistent reliable energy source and when you are responding to what turns your generator on what lights you up you can do tons of things all day long and go to bed and get up and do it again the next day and you stay healthy and it's all great. But when you are forcing and pushing against your own natural, this is what's right for me, when you're forcing doing things out of obligation or people pleasing or codependency or whatever sort of things, that energy drains your battery. So you then feel drained and when you get up you and you can wind up in burnout. So the key is to learn that we all have an innate way that we're meant to uh, make decisions in life. And yours is to listen to the internal sacral response, which is this feeling of, uh-huh, uh-uh. It's like a guttural sound that you feel like when, when you're excited, you feel this um and I'm saying it like it's a definite, but does that resonate? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, no, I know. I mean, when you were talking about when my generator, generator is like working with something that resonates, I was thinking about when I wrote my book. I wrote my book in like a month. I sat down, I would wake up in the morning, I'd get my coffee, I'd sit down on my computer, I'd write for 12 hours, I would just be in a flow state. Ooh, I'd be in a flow state, like it was just channeled through me. And it, it was just like, yeah, I was just on and I felt great. Um, and I've also worked in jobs where uh, I wasn't resonating or I wasn't on my path where it did feel like a grind and I did feel burnout. So it totally resonates. Yeah. So that's the, if you learned nothing else about your, about your chart, knowing your type and knowing what the strategy that goes with that type is, it is a huge, huge change just right there. So the big thing with anybody who is a generator type, and because the subtype or second type is a, there's something called a manifesting generator, and they both have this sacral response. So either of those two types, if you just remember that that is like, like life force energy, and you can either use it to give you energy or to take energy. So every time you make a decision to go against that internal response you're actually taking away life force energy from yourself towards the things that light you up so you know of course there are times we're going to make a choice to do something because we have an obligation that you know whatever but real really think about what that does to you and it's when people consistently are doing things that are not really what they want to be doing in not from their mind, but what they want to be doing in their body. That's when people start to really feel their bodies start to break down and um, get sick and disease starts, the dis-ease starts to happen. So if you can remember, you, first of all, the key part is you have to have something for your sacral to respond to. So when you initiate, your you're initiating from your mind then. So the response, the uh-huh, has to come before the action. So if you're thinking about what, you can't think and respond with your sacral. Your sacral responds to things outside of you. It responds to seeing, you know, what somebody has on their plate. And you go, ooh, I want that, right? Or you say, you know, you, you whatever it is, you you get that no feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. Okay, so respond. Um, you so the generator type is to um, wait, wait for something to respond to, and um, then follow follow that sacral response. And if you did nothing else different, that would steer you towards the things that your soul came here to experience. So 
every time you say yes to the right experiences, you calibrate. There's a, a, a part in your design that draws things to you, which I'm sure you know all about the law of attraction. The magnetic monopole is what um, human design teaches, draws those things to you. So if, you say, if you're saying yes to the right things, you're calibrating that magnetic monopole to draw more of the right experiences to you. And then you, those things show up and you say yes to the ones that you want and no to the ones you don't. And then that continues to calibrate your life to be the life you came here to live. So wow. thank you so much for explaining all that. Yeah, there's so much more. And I can tell that you wrote, a, 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 writing a book is, I can see the storyteller in your chart. I can see the podcast. I can see, um, you know, you have, you have this ability to see, recognize patterns of the past and, and to convince people, not just know, but to often convince people what they need to do to turn things the right way. So that if, you, if you take that with the storytelling aspects, and then you have a throat that is designed to amplify the voices of others. So um, looking at that, you know, you can see where that is the path that you are now on. The question I would ask you is, um, in the past, have you found it difficult, or you may have a tendency, let's just put it this way, you may have a tendency to um, have avoided upsetting people, trying to avoid upsetting people, because your um, emotional solar, you have an, we have an emotional solar plexus that um, when it's undefined can often feel the emotional wave of other people more intensely. So you might have at points in your life been a bit of a people pleaser trying to not have people be upset. Like, have you ever felt that you have? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe like, <clears throat> maybe when I was a child, I don't know that that doesn't really ring true in my adult years. Okay. Well, that's good. It's good. It's not, see, everything is a binary. So even though there are, there, that's often something that people will have as a shadow aspect. It's not saying that it's a part of it because, and this is another thing that I've seen. There's a human design has really exploded. So I don't, in the last year, it's been all over the place. And there's a lot of people teaching limiting beliefs under the guise of human design. And so I always caution people to steer away from people that tell you absolutes because everything is a spectrum of expression. And human design for me has been really helpful. Does everybody need human design? No, many people figure it out without because human design is about these 64 archetypes and how they express and how we feel other people's expressions of them. So there are plenty of other ways that people can find this thing. But for me, this was this really clear map of, oh, this this is why I'm this is why I'm feeling this way in the presence of others. You know, so um any any questions you had about it when you looked at your chart? No, I haven't I haven't looked at it in a while. Um, I kind of wish I had it in front of me to look at, but you were saying that the storyteller was on there. That's interesting because that's been, I, I went to college undergrad and got my master's in creative writing and writing has always been my outlet since I was a child. So that resonated. Yeah. Well, there's, um, you know, there's a lot of, in the chart that when you run your chart, you, you're not going to see something that says storyteller, but when you learn like, you know, to unpack the different things, there's different, like I said, 64 different archetypes in the gate 56, which is on your open throat center. So the throat is the manifestation center, as well as our voice. It's how we bring things into the world, whether it be in what we say or what we do. But um, gate 56 is very much a storytelling gate. It is all about, um, you know, connecting people with through the ideas, the stories that you know, shape people's, it points towards the, the mind. So it's, in, they're inspiring stories. You also have um, gate 13 on your identity center. Gate 13 is about, it's the gate of the listener, but it's also about listening in a way that helps people to reframe. So you reframe the narrative that people are telling in a way that empowers them and helps them to see 
that, oh, this didn't happen to them. It happened for them or that sort of shaping is very much in there. I'm laughing because my book is called Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality. And it's mm-hmm. all about changing your perspective. And right. that's what I do in my coaching business. Right. Yeah, I can see that. And um, so you are, well, that 56 also is a, is a very strong placement in your chart because that storytelling gate I was talking about. So human design teaches that the top, you know, the the four most prominent gates in your chart are the four squares on the top on either side of your chart if you were to look at one and those gates form what's called the incarnation cross and um your incarnation cross is formed of one of the gates is that gate 56 and the other one you know the other ones basically they all come together and they form this cross called the left angle cross of limitation and it's all about helping people to overcome these limitations and to define themselves in a way that empowers them through this limitation. And an example would be like um, taking something that maybe was a problem and turning it into a strength, you know, like, um, you know, like I think of somebody who maybe lost a limb and then uses that, uh, that they, they invent something that, they would never have invented and never have had the impact they had if they had not had the problem they had to overcome, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So, and our cross is not so much for us, it's for others. So that's something that you, when people come to you, you often would be doing for them is helping them turn their limitations into strength, which sounds what exactly what you're, what you're talking about through your narrative. So, The other thing I want to point out is there we human design teaches that we all have a um, profile and the profile is a number that looks like a like a fraction and yours is five slash one. And that means that on um, on one side, you have this fifth line profile, which the fifth line. So there's six lines in a in the hexagram of the I Ching. And that's why there's you'll see the numbers one through six used a lot. So the fifth line is sometimes known as um, the heretic. Um, it's also known, it's it's a line that you're basically a karmic mirror for people. So when people get come to you, they see what they need to see. And they might see you as the savior, the person is going to fix their whole life, or they might see you as the person who's going to ruin everything for you for them. You're, you're the problem. You're what's making everything wrong. And none of it has anything to do with anything you're doing. It's what they need. So they see this and they project that on you without even knowing it. My husband's a five one and I always catch myself going, why am I making this his fault? This is not his fault, right? This is my, this is mine to deal with, but it's easier for me to make it his fault. Right. Um, So just if you can detach from other people's responses to you, you know, and impressions and, and realize that, oh, if they're having trouble with you, it's because they have a lesson they need to learn right now. And you just need to stay focused on your message. And as a first line, the other part of your profile, that's um, known as the investigator. The first line is the bottom. It's the foundation. It's the, I have to have all the facts. Let me know everything I can need to know, or I can know about all these things. And it can be this person who just researches everything. Like, does everybody, like if somebody needs to buy a new washer, they're going to ask you what washer you bought. Cause they know when you bought your washer, you did your homework and you made sure which washer you got was the one that was going to be best. So it doesn't mean you necessarily research everything, but anything that's important to you, you're going to do your research. I, both of those things really resonate. That's super funny about the fifth line. Uh, I've had so many instances in my life where people, it, it's very, people are really polarized towards me. It's it's so true. And, and I, I literally had people say, I'm so grateful for you. You've saved my life. Right. Um, right. Because I, I run yoga companies and I'm a coach and, you know, um, but I've also had people completely project all of their stuff onto me. And I think that's a good lesson. And it's it's one I've been working on for a long time is to not take other people's stuff personally, right? Because it's so much more about who they are than who I am. 
but I, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And the researcher makes sense too. I don't I don't do research on washing machines or cars or vacations, but when it's something that I'm into, I will go down like rabbit holes. Uh, and yes, absolutely. So that really resonates. That's, this is so fun to hear you call all these things out with you not even knowing me. Like I'm, right. I'm a believer in it already. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's really, it's really cool. And, but the thing is that human design doesn't ask you to believe anything, just ask you to observe it. Right. And experiment with it. And so then say, you know, look at this whole idea of responding and know, and, you know, is my life better for doing this? Yeah, yeah, it probably will be. But if it's not, then let it go. And the interesting thing is, um, like people, like I don't have that sacral response. I'm a projector. Now, um, the sacral response people, that two camps of generator and manifesting generator, and the difference is a manifesting generator has not just a defined throat center, which I told you I've opened, so yours amplifies voices and it can really meld to other people. But a manifesting generator has a a motor, which uh, like the sacral is a motor and um, there are other motors in the chart. They have a motor that connects to their throat. So they have a powerful voice and not, it doesn't mean they're necessarily loud, but it's like, you know, EF Hutton, when EF Hutton speaks, people listen, the manifesting generator voice has impact. Okay. And I'm sorry, am I a manifesting? No, generator? no, that's the other type. I'm just kind of giving people a little, so those two types make up 70% of the planet. So the world is built for generator types. So when you find sometimes even people who are generator types find that the biggest impact that comes from knowing human design is when they find that there's someone in their life who is not one of those types. And then all of a sudden everything makes sense. Um, when you don't have that defined sacral, you don't have that ability to just um, respond to life, get up and do it again and go, go, go. The, the defined sacral ha or the undefined sacral, I mean, like, which would be myself, we can amplify that sacral energy of others and we can outwork anybody for the short term. But then we have this long recovery time and we wind up with a lot of, um, a lot of times a human design uses a term called conditioning. And that's where we're taught that, you know, we should be different than we are. The world teaches, uh, tries to homogenize us. And people with open sacrals are often shamed for being lazy because we can't, you know, we're not the people who can make it on six hours sleep a night for, you know, days and days on end. We might be able to do it for the short term, especially if we have a defined will center where we can push through, but we will burn out. We will get sick. We will. Um, and, you know, I have a lot, uh, I had a lot of scarring around the idea that I was lazy. But I also knew that in the short term, I was the one who would stay and finish the job when everyone was like, we're tired. We got to go home and go to bed. We'll come back and do it tomorrow. And I'd be like, no, let's get this done. Because I'd know tomorrow I wouldn't be able to get out of bed. Right. And so it, it helps you to understand the people in your in your life in a way that doesn't make them wrong or broken, or maybe can help them to stop trying to push to be somebody that they're not really designed to be. Um, and I think, honestly, I, the part I left out of my, my personal story that was really powerful was when I realized that my daughter was a rare type um, called manifester. And it's, you know, we all know that term. We all have the ability to manifest, but a manifester type in human design is an initiator. They have they don't have that defined sacral, but they have this motor to the throat energy and they are here to start things, but they don't have the sustainable energy to finish things. So they're often very provoking, um, sometimes, you know, really pushing kind of feeling around people and um, knowing that the the way that I was raising my daughter, thinking, oh, I'm raising her the way I wished I'd been raised, right? I didn't know human design. By the time she was 18, she had so much d internal doubt because I was teaching her to slow down. And manifestors aren't meant to stop and think. They're meant to just go with it. They have an internal, nonverbal, creative flow that just goes with the moment and then deals and then, you know, 
deals with it afterwards. And that's correct for them in a way that just was as a mother, I was like, whoa, 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 slow down. Right. It's, it's really, um, it's amazing how helpful human design is for people who are parenting children who, you know, they'll be like, I'm raising them the same way. Why are these two kids so different? Well, if you have a manifesting generator over here and then you have, there's a fifth type. We haven't talked about the reflector. A reflector is a person who has no definition. They're here. They just reflect everything back and they have a very slow decision-making process and they have to really have a sense of, stability in who they're with and never make a reflector stay somewhere they're uncomfortable they will become everything they'll take in that negativity it's really um, a very different thing so having these tools for raising children is hugely helpful because it can help us to really allow people to become the people that they came here to be and not homogenize people into you know, you've heard the thing about trying to teach a fish to climb a tree, right? Right. Yeah. Now, so I'm I'm eight months pregnant and I'm like, okay, as soon as that baby's born, I'm going to figure oh, out what his wow. chart is. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. So, so this, does it, oh, go ahead. I was just to say, is this your first child? It's my first child. Yeah. We, uh, we tried for seven years. We had a long infertility journey. So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy that he's almost here. So does, does human design give you a path to your life purpose? Does it kind of give you a hint on like what you should be focusing on? Or is it more just like this is your personality type? Well, it's deeper than personality type. So there are two sides. When you look at a chart, you'll see a, a, a row of like planets with numbers on two different sides of the chart. And one of that, the one side, which is usually referred to as the design side, that part is and co- basically encoded into our bodies 88 astrological degrees before we're born and then the re- the other side is the day we're born and so when you put these together like there are certain things that are definitely innate in who we are so it's not just like a personality thing there are things that are going to um they're like in our genes right So it's not going to tell you what you should do, but it'll tell you things like, I can see that you're here, you're a storyteller. Now, does that mean you're going to write a book or does that mean you're going to have a podcast? Okay, both. Um, Or does it mean that you're going to do that all, you know, some people might just do that all on their own. They might, they might write music, right? But so it's going to tell you the qualities that you're meant to express. It's not going to tell you what your career is. Um, It's not going to tell you who you should marry. Anybody who tells you that you can see compatibility in the human design chart, um, really look at that cautiously because there is no perfect design for you. It's just um, there are, what do you call it, relationship readings that are super helpful, but they don't tell you this person is wrong for you. They tell you how to navigate the energy in the most successful way or... um, you know, like some people will say, oh, type plus type, you know, like projectors are good with projectors. Um, you know, sure, that can be good, too. But you know what? My husband's a manifesting generator and um, we've been married for 26 years and we've had our ups and downs. But everything's, you know, part of <clears throat> excuse me, but knowing his type has been huge for me because I realized how many times I was frustrated because he was not like me. Right. And I wanted him to understand me, but I didn't wasn't taking the time to really understand him and how he was actually designed so differently than me. And so when you can take the time to really look at the way a person's energy works, it's really empowering. And it can get super deep. And you can spend, I've been doing this for seven years, and there's still so much I don't know. But you know, you don't need to know all that. It's just, you know, there's always more. All you need to know is your strategy and your authority. And even, even some people aren't really great with that. You know, the strat, your strategy is wait to respond. Your authority is your sacral. Okay. Um, Just observing the way different things work in your chart, little bits here and there can always add 
layers of understanding. And it just gives you a, a sense of compassion for yourself that I think is really powerful, right? Because it's like, oh, that's not something I'm doing that I need to fix. That's something I need to just stop fighting against. Yeah. So when you say my strategy is wait to respond, you were you're referring to when earlier you were talking about how someone ha- I, I have to like hear something or read something before I can amplify it or or before you feel that uh uh-huh uh uh-uh really you want to really pay attention the first thing I tell my gen my clients who are sacral um in generator types is just don't get in your head about doing anything else just throughout the day just try to notice as much as you can now this will be tricky because you're pregnant right so you're going to feel a lot of stuff going on down there um but You know, I usually suggest put your hands on your stomach. I have a YouTube video that just asks a bunch of kind of benign questions, you know, but, you know, so I would ask, are you sitting down and then feel, did you feel anything? You know, and at first you won't because you'll be in your head trying to feel it. So, you know, that's why I made this video that people can just play and they don't have to worry about me seeing them get uncomfortable they can play it over and over and it just asks a bunch of questions like are you sitting down is it cold outside you know what is your shirt black you know and you're going to feel a yes or no kind of response for most generator types well for generator types that's going to be a uh 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 that thing that we teach kids not to do okay And because it's harder to control them, because if we're all, if you think about it, a little child comes in knowing what's right for them, maybe not what's best for them, but what's right for them in the moment, right? So if we can teach them how to stay connected to that feeling, you know, if they have that sacral response, that's really a huge thing. And if you're a sacral person who who has a child without that sacral response, watch out because they're probably, well, our kids are always our greatest teachers, but they're probably here to guide you in life if you get somebody who comes in without that sacral response. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay. Before we pressed record today, you said something like, okay, you know, how much time do we have? Because I could talk about your chart alone for three hours. So how many layers deep does this really go? Because I'm, okay. I'm getting the feeling that we just scratched the surface on my chart. Today. We have barely scratched the surface. Okay. okay. So how deep does um, it go? So it's it's one of those things where it can keep going for. It's like it's like I say life is like a spiral, right? So you um, you learn your way around the circle, and then the circle goes up, and then you learn your way around, and you keep going. So you learn things like so every every planet the way it's activated by a gate flavors the way that gate comes in. So for example, this storyteller gate is your, that I was talking about with you, that's the gate 56 on your throat. That is in your design, which is the 88 degrees of the sun. So it's encoded in your DNA, in your body. It's, um, it's, the sun on that side. So that's super strong. That's a really big part of you. Now on that same side, we have all the way at the bottom, we have Pluto. Okay. Pluto is the furthest away and the smallest, right? So that is going to have a more of a, that's going to flavor your whole generation, but it's going to not feel as strong on you as it is as that sun gate, right? So think, so understanding how different things are going to have more impact than others. And anytime you have any of those top four gates, okay, that we were talking about there, um, the ones that I said are part of your incarnation cross, when you have those on an, an undefined center, which when someone's looking at it, that will mean that's not colored in, you will have, I'm trying to make this, woo-hoo, there it goes. Okay, you will have your um Best things happen through relationship. So your stories that you're being told, because you don't have that that center defined, are going to be best when they're in relationship. So you're taught you're going to tell stories with to someone, with someone, more so than just sitting and writing by yourself. That's why the podcast is such great inspiration. And your book, I'm gonna guess, came out of inspiration of from that podcast no 
or which came first? The book came first. Oh, Actually, really? The podcast was never something I planned on doing. I just, it just fell into my lap, which is funny because that's usually when people find their, their thing, right? It just right? happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The book came first. Um, so I'm curious then, because you might have the book w- was, um, was there a particular, when you wrote your book, were you normally alone? Did you feel that you um, did, you, did you talk to people about the stories, the things in your book before you wrote them? How, like, I'm just wondering your process. So the book, I mean, it's a spiritual personal development book. Mm-hmm. But there are some personal anecdotes in there. Um, but it was a pretty solitary process. I wrote notes on my phone about things I wanted to include in it. It was like the culmination of over two decades worth of study and practice. Mm -hmm. Um, no, it was a pretty solitary, solitary thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to like, no, that's all right. No, that's okay. <laughs> you know, and I don't mean to make it sound like, you know, I'm not trying to force the idea that it was in there, but your stories are going to deepen and be their best when you are telling them in in connection with a person because that hanging gate um when I say hanging gate that means it's not connected to the to something on the other side is looking for something. So when we have this, this energy that's looking for something, it's best served in relationship where it can find it. But you also have this energy of um, speaking from experiences, personal experiences too. So um, or not so much personal experiences, it's ex- your personal experience of um, collective things a lot of times, like the experiences might be broader than just you. But they're your your perspective of it. So, and that's one of the other gates you have on your um on your throat. You have your throat. You have so, anyway. Um, I I know that you were at so you were asking about what are the layers. So the layers are usually when I when I start working with someone, I was throwing a whole bunch of stuff out here in this, but I usually focus on the strategy and authority of the type and understanding that on a, you know, a deeper level, the profile lines, which we talked about the five one, and then we talk about the next layer would be to look at the different centers, there's nine energy centers, and whether they're defined or undefined, has a huge impact on how you are perceived in the world, how you feel to other people, how other people feel to you. So we learn about that layer, then we get into channels, which is the lines that connect the centers. And um, that's the part that I said comes from the Kabbalah. And there's meaning to each of the channels. And each channel is formed from gates. And there's meanings to each of the gates. And you have gates that don't connect into channels. They're just hanging there waiting for someone else to connect. And there's significance in how that draws people to you. So there's layers in that. Now, um, there's so many different layers in all of this stuff. You don't need to know all of it. Usually the way I go, rather than, you know, that's like the standard flow of the hierarchy of what to learn. But generally when I'm working with a client, I will talk about what's going on in your life. Where's the, where's the pain point or the anxiety or the frustration or whatever. And then we'll see where that is and where you might be going against something in your chart. And you don't need to learn all every working of the chart you just need to learn enough to know that you're okay and so that you can start to make choices using that inner authority the way that it's a that we talked about and get out of your own way with your head so I mean it's so fascinating and I had no idea it was so complex and so layered and you know I because my my that question was leading into another question like is this something where someone can just download their chart and read it but like I'm thinking Mm -hmm. no like you need they need to go to someone like you or go to you know someone who's trained in this because or do the do the training themselves right because there's so much to see and to learn and to know 
Well, like I said, you don't need to know all of it. There is a lot to know, but it's kind of like, you know, if you go and you have an astrology reading, you don't need to become an astrologer to get value from that astrology reading. Now, there's more to this than that, but you don't need to know all of it. You just need to know. And that's where my intuition comes in, where we talk about, you know, what are you going to need to know? Like with you, what are you going to need to know to be the best new mom, for example? That's something new in your life that might be causing some uncertainty. You have an open root center. You can feel a lot of pressure to do things that aren't necessarily yours to do Mm -hmm. and how to navigate that. That can be very important. The open solar plexus might be, you know, you, you might feel that you're as a new mom meant to make sure that your baby is never uh, unhappy. That's a common thing for every new mom anyway, but we have to all be allowed to feel, feel, feel things and how to navigate all that and not feel the pressure to fix every little cry, but still be there. And what, you know, that, that all of that stuff, there's a lot in human design that can help you to navigate. So what, that's why I have, I love working with my mentoring clients who once a week, we have a one hour session. We just talk about what's going on. We look at the chart. We, we usually have a, this is what we're going to look at next kind of idea, but then we usually spend the first half of the call just talking about life and where to find the answers in the chart for things that are coming up sort of thing. So I love that as a way in, right? Like what are you dealing with right now that this can help you navigate or give some sort of clarity to, and rather than just kind of bombarding people with all of this information about, you know, their, their design type that that's really cool. So tell people how else, um, how, how else you work with people, where they can find mm-hmm. you, all the things. <clears throat> well, my, um, my website is my name. It's kathybashanko.com. And, you know, you'll see the spelling on here. And you can you can either book a one-hour reading, um, which usually is, feels like a tease for a lot of people. You'll get a lot of me. I mean, we talked about a lot of stuff in an hour. And if that's all you have time or inclination to do, I love doing those. Um, my favorite thing to do is to work with people one-on-one as, in the mentoring program, and you can t- sign up for that there as well. I also have a Facebook group called Intuitive Human Design, and right now I'm doing a really fun thing. Every Sunday, I do these conversations that I call Sunday Story Hour, and <clears throat> excuse me, the Sunday Story Hour is a conversation with someone who is deep into their human design experiment. And we talk about how they found it, what they're doing with it. And then we just kind of talk about life and human design for an hour in a very um, conversational, flowing kind of format that has just turned into something really beautiful. And that's done live in my Facebook group, but I also put them on my YouTube channel, which is- I was going to say, I hope you're recording those because those are are amazing podcasts. (laughs) Yes. And I'm actually in the process of- formatting them into a podcast but right now they're on my youtube channel and um in the facebook group so awesome well listeners head over to the links in the show notes if you didn't get all that um and i'm i'm sure there's tons of people listening that are dying to come get a reading with you i want to get more of an in-depth reading with you i want my husband to get a reading with you so um this has been great i didn't even get to ask you what the difference between traditional and quantum human design is and that was like the first i'll just say really quick quantum (laughs) human design is more empowering language that is um based on the idea of frequency of words mattering there's some more darker language in the traditional human design that was written in this 1987 so is that when it was discovered uh, that's when he got the download and karen curry parker has actually tested all of the the words with to write the new empowered language because her sacral said no to the language of the original and it's really it really is very empowering language so that's wow. the simplified version of yeah. the difference. Yeah. The simplified version of all this complex stuff. Right. Um, right. No, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. I learned so much today. I I feel like there's so much more to learn and that's really exciting. And uh, yeah, no, I just appreciate you coming on and doing my chart. Thank you so much. Yeah, for doing thank that. you for asking me. This was fun. Yeah. I can't then, wait to see the baby's chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone listening, please like, share, subscribe, help spread the good word. If you thought this episode was intriguing, share it with someone who 
might get some answers and some clarity for what they're going through right now through human design. So thank you all so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day.